Finishing up the second part of a, uh, a lesson that we started last week titled Let's Get Practical. Oliver just told me a while ago that looks, I thought you were going to write up there, Let's Get Physical, like that song. Let's <laughs> Get Physical. I don't know, uh, was that Olivia Newton John from two eons yeah. ago or something? But anyway, we're not, we're not going to get physical, instead, we're going to get practical. Um, I've really appreciated about the Jeff Leak book that it does do precisely that. It gets pr practical and it, it gets you handles. I think we need handles on how to um, accomplish a disciplined prayer life. And so this is a wonderful just uh, teaching tool to help us that way. Yes. Uh, last week, uh, a couple of the things that we talked about just to review so we said that it's important for your devotion time to have a, a place and a time. Um, a consistent, steady place where it is your place of prayer. Uh, some of you will remember my talk about the upstairs attic and the little A-frame roof where I couldn't stand up straight except in the very middle. If I veered to the left or the right, I'd hit my head. And, had orange shag carpet in it that thick. And, uh, but that was where I met with God when we lived in Colorado. And uh, one of the individuals last week said, hey, it's out on, you know, it's out on the property. We've got a ranch and we just, we go, I go out way out and there's nothing but the fields and the old truck and, you know, I just got this spot, that's where I go. Um, it doesn't matter where it is, but there's something special about having a place that is your place of prayer. Jesus said, enter into the inner, the inner closet and pray privately. And when you have prayed in private, the Lord will bless you openly. Um, I like the movie War Room. How many of you saw War Room? Love that movie. I know some of my friends, Dale Workman is one of them. I know she put into practice the concepts of war room, and that is just to have a room that's just where Scripture is put on the walls and you read the Word and you pray. Um, it's important to have a place. And it's important to have a time because, um, and here's what I, I really wanted to emphasize from last week, we need to have an appointment with God every day. That's right. And I know that some of us were more inclined to say, well, I don't want to think of my prayer life that way. I don't want it to be boxed in. Um, I understand that, and I think, I think there's really, really something to be said for being in prayer without ceasing. All of us should be practicing that continually. Um, to, you know, Thessalonians to pray, says to pray without ceasing, and I've said this numerous times, the, the word picture from the original language there in the Greek language, it is pray with the frequency of a hacking cough. Just keep it going, just, you know, do not take a Hall's cough drop, but keep the cough going and, and keep praying. And you know how a cough sneaks up on you. You know, you, you think it's gone and then all of a sudden it kind of tickles your throat and out, out it comes again. Here's another metaphor uh, from the Bible. Uh, the Bible speaks of meditation. And there's a very distinct word picture with meditation as well. And you're going to love this. Now, how many of you are still eating? Is everybody finished eating? Okay. <laughs> The, the biblical concept of meditation is the old cow chewing the cud. <laughs> oh, cow has four stomachs. The food goes down, comes back up, chew on it a little bit, goes back down, comes back up, chew on it a little more. That's meditation. And so that's incredibly important for us. We need to have ongoing uh, prayer without ceasing and, and meditation. But I cannot emphasize enough how incredibly important it is to put it on your calendar every day and say, this is my most important appointment of the day. I'm going to be with God and nothing is going to interrupt that appointment. And uh, so, so um, uh, yeah, you have to have a place. You have to have a, um, a time. Um, 
I guess one reason that I think it's important to do things like this, like this class where it's just very, very practical. Um, I'll give you a for instance. Yesterday I was doing some research and um, I came across a blog by a Muslim medical doctor who is very faithful to his mosque. And he made the statement in a blog post that he did not understand um, the why behind uh, certain preaching and that he was not being cocky or arrogant, he was not being angry or vicious, but he was sincerely saying, I'm, I'm dying to hear my imam talk about why it is we think homosexuality is wrong. Why it is we think sexual perversion is wrong. This is a medical doctor, very educated man. Um, and he said, and I would love to hear that from, uh, from any source of leaders. He said, I, I think that um, the leader at the mosque, he said, and from what I've heard from Christian friends, uh, pastors shy away from teaching about these things. Um, I understand when they say it's wrong. I, I follow what they're saying, but I don't know why why it's wrong. And so I wrote um, a response to him, and I said, Dr. Soto, I, I, um, I said, I'm a, a conservative uh, pastor of a Pentecostal church. We're part of the Assemblies of God. I, I'm intrigued by your article. It's well written, and you asked some good questions. And I said, in the month of June, because of your article, I'm going to be doing a teaching series titled, You Asked. And it will cover the seven questions that you just asked. And it will be on Facebook Live, and it will be recorded on video. And I would really encourage you to watch. And I hope that you'll interact with me, because I think you, you hit on an important thing, and that is not what we believe, but why it is that we believe that. And, and I think it's important um, to tie that in here, just to tie it in. I think it's important that we don't just say, Christians, pray and read your Bible. But I think it's important that we say, here's why it's important. And also, here's how. Here's how you do that. And many of you know, I mean, man, I'm preaching to the choir right here. I mean, I'm looking at the Wednesday night crowd. You guys, you've been walking with the Lord faithfully. Your servants. Um, uh, if we added the accumulation of the years of service in this room, um, it would it would predate the dawn of the earth. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, hey, I'm with you. I'm, I'm up here. But um, in, in all seriousness, I don't think that I'm going to say anything new. I don't think that in this class we're going to say anything new. Um, not anything that we've, you know, that we've never heard before, but I think it's good for us to talk about it and to review it. So, um, before we move on, there, there are some other points that he makes, but I want to hear from you. You're in the driver's seat tonight. Um, I want to hear your comments. Anything that you wanted to say last week, because we kind of got cut off right there at the end, uh, anything that was just left hanging, because these are important things. So, I guess what I'm looking for is um, any advice or tips, um, anything that has worked for you through the years um, about having a place in a time of prayer. Or, you, even if it's more than that, even if you have something that, you know, I really wanted to share this about my prayer life, something that has blessed me, that has helped me, that I think that I think will help other people. Okay, so uh, anybody got any comments? It, yes, yes, Craig? I guess I want to <clears throat> I want to comment against what you're saying. Not because what you're saying is bad, but because some of us don't have an opportunity to have such a specific regimen. And so I've split my place up between my shed and then twice a week I, I have this phenomenal uh, prayer time for 
one to two hours out hiking in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And the people are so spread out, I don't see anybody for two hours. Mm -hmm. And so it gives me an excellent opportunity. Fantastic. And then time-wise, you know, I don't know what's going to happen every morning. You know, I could get up earlier, but I'm already getting up, you know, really early. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I just, I guess I don't want anybody to go on a guilt trip because they don't have a fixed time. Yeah. Because as long as you're honest and find the time to do it, you know, it may be 4.30 or it might be 5.30 or, you know, just give it in. Well, Craig, you didn't contradict what I'm saying at all. You do have a time and place. I guess what I would say is there's, there's seasons of life and there's different demands on all of us. And um, for each one of us, it's imperative that we find a way that it works. And what you just described to me is a regular, consistent prayer life and devotion life. Um, I do think, I, I agree with what you said, but what I do not want anybody to ever say is, I just don't have time. Because we manage our time. We make the choice of what's important to us. And, and if you, if you want to know what's important to you, look at your wallet and look at your calendar. Those two things will show you what is most important in your life. Now, I, I know your schedule, but I know your life, and I know your life situation. I'm amazed by you. I am blown away by you. And I know some of you, some of, some of the um, unbelievable commitment, the incredible devotion, bless you. There's all of us. We have different seasons, different stretches of life. So there's different ways to pull it off. I appreciate so much what you said. I don't want one person to experience guilt. That's not what this is about at all. Um, so thank you. Though I think you and I are saying the same thing. I really, really do. Um, anybody else? Yeah, Oliver. Yeah. About the time and the place. Sometimes um, you can't do both at the same time. The time and the place. Sometimes you have to make the decision: is it the place today or is it the time? Like when I was in the service, um, time wasn't uh, something I could control. When we're out to sea, we're working seven days a week, twelve hours a day. But I had a place. Um, that place was under the receiver that launched the planes. I'm the only one down there, and so I had a place. When we're in court. Then I had time. It was mine. And so I think you do with what you do, and you do with what you have. Jesus, when he walked the earth, was not always in the same city, so he didn't always have the same place, but he made the same time. So you, you got to work with what you have. Yeah, so oh, excellent. Anybody else with comments? Yeah, John, chime in. I, just, uh, I agree with everything I've heard. Yeah. I, I agree. It's, it's about it's the key is consistent time for work. Um, I love having a single place where I go. I, I do, and it, I can't tell you how many times when, when things have been overwhelming or been beat up by the enemy or somebody, and I can go into that place where I, where I pray every day of the Lord, and I just call out to Him, and He's always there. Mm -hmm. It's funny how that works. I, I, it's kind of weird to think that, well, yeah, He needs me other places too. But every time I go to that place, and I just call out to Him, He's there. Yeah. And part of that's my conditioning, my preparation, I don't know. But there's there is something in that that is well I remember walking out in the in the woods like, like you did, Craig, and talking about taking a hike, taking a hike, and that was my time to pray too. Yeah. Yeah. So I found that and, and I would find the presence of the Lord with you there too. It's, it, he'll meet you anywhere. Yeah. But I have a place in my house that I go to and every morning when I get up the first thing I do is I you know, pray. And every morning he meets me there. Beautiful. That's I um I love the outdoors too. For a good long stretch, my prayer place was my walk with the Lord, just walking and praying. And so, um, I don't think it's so important where that place is, but that we have that we have a regular and consistent uh, prayer time. So we've heard from a lot of male voices. <laughs> Any females want to share something? Else? Yes. Uh -huh. So, busy mom. <laughs> oh my goodness, wow. Yeah, busy mom. I'm consistent with getting up in the morning and doing my prayer time. For, and it's, it's usually simple prayer. Just um, asking us to cover my kids and school and, you know, that type of thing. My husband on the road and what have you. But it's not like, um, you said last time, I feel like I need to do more. Like I need to get more into prayer time. Um, 
dealt with that last time. And so I was feeling that way too. So now I'm feeling like I like the walks. I love walking, putting on my gospel music and just praying and yeah. worshiping. And then evenings are good for me. When kids go to bed, I have a quiet time, I have my little lamp, my nice couch, and then I can just get into the word and I can pray or I can put on my worship music or what have you. But evenings are like the best time because it's quiet, everybody sleeps. <coughs> it's a little bit of mom time. That's yeah. not the morning when I'm rushing, trying to get everybody to where they need to be. So that's kind of like my time. I wonder if, because I've heard this all my life, but if you have a praying mom, just give up. Because there's something about a mama's prayers. And I wonder if it's not because, oh my goodness, when you're a mom, your schedule and your love, your love, your commitment, how incredible that is. So, um, But yeah, thank you, Jesse, for sharing that. Um, who else? This is really good. I'm enjoying this. This man. I just want to share her a more so. This is uh, in regards to my four-year-old, my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And um, last night, I was watching a basketball game. Mm -hmm. And she came and sat next to me and she said, Nana, I'm going to pray for your team. <laughs> and she said, and you know what else? Because she know I, my car. I don't have a car right now. Let's just stop and pray now. I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to watch the game. <laughs> but I said, out of the mouth of babes and the words established, I put it on pause, and she prayed the most precious prayer in the world. I credit her mother. She prayed. She said, cover with our blood, Lord. She said, praise the Lord. Jesus, she was just using all the words, beautiful word. And she said, and Lord, bring my Nana's car back. And she just, the precious prayer, it was overwhelming. Because at four, at the four year old, praying that prayer. And she said, in the name of Jesus. I believe in family prayers. If I if I can get my kids in the morning to school, sometimes I can drop them off, sometimes they have to walk, but whenever they're in the car with me in the morning, we do a family prayer. And so we, we pray all together. And we just you drive it and who leads the prayer today? You know what I mean? And so Malachi, Kiara, somebody lead the prayer, and then we just do. So cool. So it's in the name of Jesus. She had a little hands up. <laughs> so I wanted to see how she, what she was doing. This is what she was doing, I promise you. And I said, oh my God. I told my daughter, train up a child in the way that they should go. And she surely does. So, oh, that's awesome. our grandkids, man, precious. Yeah, I think it was uh, Timber shared last week about riding with the kids in the car, just like that, on the way to school. What a great idea. Pray with them on the way to school. Jesus was asked, um, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he brought a child up in front of him. He said, if you want, if you want to be great, become like a child. Boy, there, that's, thank you for sharing that. So, um, that's why God invented DVR so we could pause <laughs> the prayer. <laughs> that's that's wonderful though. I and you know what? I, I want to be obedient um, because I heard your table praying for a, a car for you, and you just said your granddaughter prayed for a car. We're going to pray. We're let's all join together, Father, in the name of Jesus, for our sister. Provide the vehicle she needs. We're asking you to not just give her any old clunker, but give her a nice ride and let it and let it run great and let it have air conditioning because we need air conditioning here in Arizona. And let it let it run for many years. Bless her, Lord. Take care of this need, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Well, um, the third thing that we really didn't get into, and uh, this is so anti-Pentecostal, plan to have a plan for prayer. Amen. Is it okay to have a plan to pray, or should we just be led by the Spirit always in a prayer? 
Well, I think both are great. I'm yeah. not, you know, I, I really, and I really mean that. I, I think it's wonderful to have the Holy Spirit just leading you and just guiding you to pray for different things. But I also think it's great to have a plan for prayer. Um, I wouldn't recommend this book to everybody because it's designed specifically for pastors. But Reuben P. Job and Norman Shawchuk wrote a book called um, just it, well, it's it's simply the Book of Prayer, and it's it's a structured devotional guide for each week of of the year. I got it in 1999. I've used it three different years, and each time it has enriched my life. So I'm not saying that all of you should do it, but the, the way it's designed, you begin each, each morning with reading a paragraph, a, a beautiful prayer to just set the tone. Then you read from the Psalms, and then you read something typically from the New Testament. And then you, you read a brief um, writing from someone about that and then uh, about the topic and then after that you pray in specific ways like it will say pray for um, needs in your church family or it may say pray for your family or, or different areas and then there's always a hymn um, I don't always know all of the hymns I know a lot of hymns I, I grew up singing hymns and and many of them I commit to memory, but some of these are from people that have been dead for 300 years. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know how I go, so I'll make it up. I'll make up something with a hymn, and, uh, or else just read the words and let them really sink into my spirit. And then it, and it closes with a brief prayer. And always um, when I've done that, I leave that experience so enriched, so alive, just so empowered and ready for the day. Um, have any of you got, have you used any devotional material that, um, does anything come to mind? Something that you say, I'd like to share with everybody. Yeah, Deanna. Well, I have a couple of devotionals, and it's for um, people like me who are in the flesh too much. When I'm absolutely lazy, mm -hmm. I'm just being un honest, mm -hmm. I, can, I grab, I know I have to get the word in me, the word's anointed, and I've got to get some, and if it's one sentence or one paragraph or one, Mm -hmm. I open my devotional, I'll get something in, so whatever. It's just, I have them in the kitchen, so if I have to, if I have to read a paragraph and that's all, I'll, I'm too busy and that's all I get, I got something in me. That. That's beautiful. Deanna, wait a minute now. You did not just say that you live in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are we going to let her stay in the church? <laughs> okay. No, no, here's. You're newer to the church, you probably have heard me say it, but um, this is a place where we can get real, where you can be yourself. And um, we are spirit-led, but we live inside these bodies. And I, I just know this rascal, I know how Keith Howard is, every single day I have to tell him, get to that Bible, you open that Bible, you get to prayer right now because, and then it, it it becomes a delight, but here's what I've found, is that um, the prayer life moves from discipline to delight. I would even say, before that, there's a desire first that moves to discipline, that moves to delight. I, that's how it has been for me. I don't know if, if, if that would be true for all of us, but for me, it definitely has been that way. I, my prayer time, I liken it to this, um, and I think probably all of you are the same way. Um, you take regularly, you take a bath or a shower. Am I right? No, no. No, I tell you something. I take a shower once a month. Yeah. Whether I need it or not. Some, some of you think, well, we were beginning to wonder. But usually, I mean, almost always it's every day. And, and I don't really get bothered by the fact that I have a routine. I mean, I lather up the same way, I use the shampoo at the same time, I use the conditioner, I get the body wash, you know, it just gets, it, you rinse off, you dry, you, you just get ready. You do it. 
You have your routine. Your routine is different than my routine, but we all we all have routines, and uh, and, and I think that that that's that is definitely it's good to have a plan. Deanna, thank you. You know I'm joking around. I, I, that is so honest and so real and refreshing. I just love it. Love that so much. Well, Pastor, I want to say one more thing. I am a talker, and one day I was in a big hurry, and I ripped that book open, and real fast it said something about Ecclesiastes, cha Ecclesiastes chapter 5. It said, hush your mouth. And I read that and the book. But, but it, it, it is something to go to if you're in a jam and you have a Do you have, is there a name for that? Book? I have two. One something about the chocolate. I have two. Okay, and that's so awesome. You know, because maybe one's more powerful than the other on the same day. They're a daily devotional, so you just go to April 25th. And oh, that's beautiful. Well, your, your quote of Ecclesiastes 5 reminded me of an old Texas proverb. Shut my mouth wide open. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, Lester? I am. Uh, in my office, I have lots of devotional books because my guy is buying for me. Oh, and I don't really use those. Uh -huh. I do use the Bread of Life. I've always oh, enjoyed yeah. that. That's good. Get on. But I have a calendar that uh, it's about like this, and you know, it's got the cardboard that comes out, tripod, and so you flip the pages. It has all the days of the year, and it has a little story, and then it has the verse on it. Oh, okay. And uh, Don Mellon gave it to me years ago at Cornerstone. And uh, it's interesting because it still seems new every time. Because I'll get in a hurry and I don't read it that day. And then you have the weekends that you're not reading it. And so it seems like it's always alive. And every once in a while if I wrote something that I prayed about or whatever on that. Mm -hmm. And then I flip that and I remember, oh, I forgot all about that. Oh, yeah. that. I like it because uh, I've had it for a long time. But it still seems fresh to me. And it does. Uh, keeps in putting those sayings, those stories, and it's so amazing how uh, so many of the times it actually is uh, talking about today. And, mm -hmm. you know, God's mm -hmm. Word is that way. You know, we think, we read it, and we think, okay, I've devoured the, all the fruit of that. Yeah. And it just continuously changes for our needs that we have. But I think about that. I, Love to see Don and tell him, you know, I've still got the hey, It's oh, it's starting to fall it's, apart, and I got a lot of tape on it. But. <laughs> now, did you say Don Mellon? Is Don he, Mellon. Is he the one connected with McDonald's? Yeah, he owns the. Yeah, he okay. did. I don't know how many he owns now, but he had a bunch of us. We were on a, a committee together for mm -hmm. uh, prayer, and uh, he gave all of us that. It's been wow, a long time. Good, and, uh, good stuff. It's, yeah, it's a need to have that and, and stuff, but it's, it's something that keeps me consistent when I don't get my regular Bible reading in. Well, you know, and the Word says, Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing to the soul and the spirit, mm -hmm. dividing between joints and marrow and soul and spirit, That's right. judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And then the next verse says, all of creation is opened and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So the Bible, it's, it is so much more than just ink on paper. It is, or it's so much more than a digital imprint on a digital file. It's, it's when you read the Holy Word, it reads you. Um, it's not just... <coughs> information but it is formation yeah. it forms us it interacts with us and so I, I love that and because we've all done that haven't we you read the bible and you read something you've read it before but you read it and it just touches you for that moment for that very day exactly what you needed so yeah beth uh, <clears throat> well i like uh, the glorian and uh kenneth Copeland's uh, okay so I have it in my bathroom, in my, one of my Bibles in the bathroom. <laughs> so the first time that I get up in the morning, I run in here and read it. <laughs> and then I go to the shower. Mm -hmm. and then I get dressed. And then I go in and study uh, uh, 
one of the books that we have here or something. Gloria and Kenneth Copeland. Okay, so all of this is so incredible. We, we've got uh, just a couple minutes left. Here, here's the situation. All right. You just meet this brand new guy named Keith. And I say to you, I'm a, a Christian. I accepted Jesus as my Lord. I really want to know how to pray. I really want to get closer to God. You've got 30 seconds while we're waiting at the elevator and it's about to change. What do you tell me? Okay, talk to him like he's a friend. I love that. That's so beautiful. Keep it simple. What else? Any, what comes to mind? I really want to grow. I want to pray. This is all new to me. How do I do it? I'm scared to answer because it's the pastor. I know Keith is really the pastor. <laughs> Yeah, I told you, you know, Matthew 6, the disciples had that same question, and Jesus uh, showed them how to pray using the Lord's Prayer. Okay. And if you look at that as an outline, you can really have it in your prayer life. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Yes. In that same passage, sometimes we skip, they ask him how to pray, and he says, when you pray. When you pray. So the idea is you do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The way, you're not suggesting the way to become better at praying is praying. That's that is awesome. We we really it's so true. When you pray, um, you know I'm thinking about the the sermon on the mat uh, on the mount. When you give alms, when you pray, when uh, there's several of those that he he assumes we're going to do it. That's such a good point. Thank you, Pastor Z, for sharing that. So just just do it. Just begin. It's, it's going to be unique to all of us. Probably have our own flair. Be a little bit different for each one of us. Anybody else? Yes, if I had 30 seconds, I don't think I'd tell them how to pray. I think I'd tell them to read John. Read the book of John. Amen. Oh, yeah. Or read the book of John. That's good. That would stimulate anything, you know, the growth and the praying, that, that would come. That's really you good. you got to have the Word, the Word itself. And I like certain devotional books, but I shy away from them because sometimes I'll read somebody's words, but I want to read God's Word. So I, I, I make sure that I'm reading Scripture every day, not just some good thoughts, mm -hmm. even though they can be helpful. Yeah. I have my favorite devotional book that I've used over the years, different times. And I'm on the time of streams in the desert. Dreams in the streams. streams in the desert. That's streams the old, in the that's desert. An old, okay. An old, an old, boy. Then ever But the word is the most the important word. part of devotion. Amen. Um, I love when we get together. I think we've brought real balance to it. Um, I appreciate all of the comments because. I, the very last thing I would ever want is for anyone to feel like that I um, endorsed anything that was legalistic. In other words, that you have to do this and check this off each day, and if you don't do that, then you're not serving God. Please hear my heart on that. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I think that all of us, we're going to have to... Um, develop our own ways, our own approaches, and but but the danger is that we never talk about these kinds of things, and then we just leave it to chance. We don't want to do that either. So that beautiful balance. Um, yes. I know you're wrapping it up, so I just wanted to share this. <clears throat> I don't think I'm too much different than everybody else. There are times. I have devotions that there are some difficulties. Like in the morning, my place of prayer is in my easy chair. We have just two rooms. I don't want to wake my wife up. So I sit in the easy chair and pray. The difficulty is, that's where I take my nap, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what I'm trying to do. 
Pastor Z and Pat, you guys are just so refreshing. We love you all so much. Thanks for sharing that because, um, I mean, we, that, that's being real. And there's different stages of life. There's just the amount of space you have. That's where your devotions are. And I think God just enjoys if you drift off sometimes. I just think he loves being with you. I just, um, praise God. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't know if you're ready for this for this prayer to close, but this is the way I felt directed to pray. I hope you'll receive it. Heavenly Father, um, we had a practice right here. Um, we created a scenario in which someone said, I really want to grow in my walk with the Lord. How do I do that? And what if we only had just a moment to talk with Him? You know, that could happen. That could happen tomorrow. It could happen Friday. It could happen Saturday or Sunday. Here's the prayer, Lord, that I'm asking. I'm asking that, that you will let that happen for every single person in this room. Praise God. I pray that you will let that happen. Um, we're ready. And give us opportunities. Crisscross our path with someone, and, and maybe we will get the chance to, to pour into them words of life. I also ask that you help us each to be so sincere and devoted to you. Um, yes, we're all different. We all have different stretches of life, different obligations. Uh, we have different seasons that we are in. But Lord, know that our heart is that we want to be with you. We love to be with you. So for each one of us, whatever that looks like, let it be the very best that it can be, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right.